Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we will discuss about our project that is SAP1 architecture based 8 bit computer design. In this lecture, we will learn about the internal construction and also the working principle of this computer. And also, we will get some idea about how we can design it. So, without further ado, let's begin. So before we begin, we need some brief introduction about the SAPs. So SAP basically stands for simple as possible. Um, and these kind of computers were actually introduced by Albert Paul Malvino in his book, Digital Computer Electronics. Uh, there are actually three types of SAPs, uh, SAP1, SAP2 and SAP3. And the main reason behind introducing this kind of computers is that um, they have a very simplified computer architecture, but still they follow the same fundamentals of modern computers. Okay, so we can learn these architectures very easily, still get the idea of modern computers. Uh, let's take von Neumann architecture for example. In von Neumann architecture, what they say is that a computer should have three uh, part that uh, those are the obviously the processing unit there should be a processing unit then a control unit that will control the whole system and also a memory that will contain the data and the instructions and in a sense the modern computers that we use today follows these fundamentals okay and if you look at the architecture of SAPs or if we will see obviously we will see in this lecture that our SAP1 will follow these fundamentals that means it will it will contain the processing unit and control unit and also the memory unit okay so that's why this is very important to learn this kind of architectures to get the idea of a basic computer and also, as we know, there are three types of SAP, SAP1, SAP2, and SAP3. And SAP1 is the first one among those. Okay. And we will learn about SAP1. And at the right side in the figure, we can see uh, an implementation of SAP1. So it was done by Ben Eater. Uh, it is actually a modified version of SAP1. Uh, Bain Eater has a long video series about this. Uh, you can look it up. And also he did the whole implementation in a breadboard. So that's obviously impressive. So here we can see the architecture of SAP1. All the modules or blocks that are needed for designing these are already shown here. This is just an overview of the whole design. So all the modules will be discussed in great detail in the later part of the lecture. Uh, but let me begin. So the first module that we will need is an 8-bit bus. So here we can see the bus. Then you obviously know about RAM. I think this was covered in your theory lecture. For our design, we will need a 16 by 8-bit RAM. Uh, so here we can see the RAM, uh, then a program counter which is in 4-bit, here is the program counter, uh, then an input unit and memory address register, which can also be called as MAR. So here the input unit and then the MAR. Then we will need an 8-bit arithmetic and logic unit which can also be called as ALU. So this is the main processing unit of our design. And this is the ALU here in the figure. And for the uh, storing and sending the data to the ALU, we'll need two registers, right? So for that purpose, we'll have two 8-bit registers. One is called the accumulator and another is register B. Uh, so here you can see the accumulator which is connected with the ALU and similarly register B is also connected with ALU, right? And another thing is that this accumulator can also be called as register A. Okay, let me proceed. Then 
the controller sequencer this is the most important block of our design because this controller sequencer is actually controlling all other modules uh, for example uh, as you can see from this controller sequencer 12 bits are coming out okay so this 12 bits are coming out from controller sequencer and if you look closely you will see that these bits are actually coming as input to some of the modules let's say for this instruction register this ii is actually coming from controller sequencer so all the modules are controlled by this controller sequencer then obviously for showing the output we will need an output unit right here we can see this output unit and also if we come to the instruction obviously as a computer our computer should have some capability to execute instructions right our computer sap1 should be capable of executing five instructions those are lda at sub out and also halt uh, all of these instructions will be discussed very soon so don't worry uh, then another important thing is your clock signal because for running our computer obviously we will need some clock pulse uh, for generating our clock pulse there is a requirement that is our clock pulse should have clock signal should have two modes of operation one is auto and another is manual okay so what do we mean by that let me discuss okay so let me uh, discuss the main clock signal and the requirement for our design okay first of all uh, our clock signal should be generated using triple five timer ic okay i think uh, already in your electronics course these things were covered where uh, we generate clock pulse using triple five timer IC like a stable multi vibrator or mono stable multi vibrator something like this okay so I think you already know about those then as we have already discussed there should be two modes of operation for the main clock one is automatic another is manual so what do I mean by automatic and manual let me explain so in automatic the clock pulse will be generating on its own and keep doing that like this okay without any manual interaction so here these are the positive edges which will trigger the modules okay so in manual mode there should be a push button and this push button should be connected with the manual circuitry and whenever we push the button uh, our device will advance each clock cycle okay so something like this let's say at this point we push the button so at this moment the clock pulse will trigger for one cycle like this okay then until we push the button again it will do nothing whenever we push the button again let's say at this moment we push the button again then it will trigger one another pulse like this okay so as you know uh, in general our devices are positive edge triggered so at this moment our components or modules will trigger also at this moment our components will trigger but for automatic case here at all those positive edge triggering our components all the components in our design will trigger okay so here as we can see the output of automatic clock and also the manual clocks are connected with this max and there is a selector here so based on the situation that is automatic or manual one of the inputs will be selected and that will be sent to all the modules so here as we can see the output from automatic clock and also the manual clocks are connected with this max 
and this selector will determine which of these inputs will be selected that is automatic or manual which will be defined by us obviously and that clock pulse will be sent to our SAP1 okay so now we will discuss about our 8-bit bus 8-bit bus is basically just 8 wires as you can see uh, this is actually our bus and 8 wires can be seen right and all the modules are connected with this bus so that data transfer can happen uh, among the modules okay so let's take module a for example uh, as you can see it is connected in two ways with the bus in the upper connection here if some data is available at the bus that data will be sent to module a if module a wants to receive it if you want to see the lower connection here it is actually for outputting any data to the bus that means if module a has some data stored in it and it wants to send that data to the bus it can do that using the lower eight words okay and also uh, the input pins here that can be seen will be discussed very soon so let me give you some example to explain you the rules that we have to follow for designing our bus okay so what is the first rule the first rule is at a single time instance only one module will send data to the bus and only one module will receive that data okay what that actually means is that as you can see at at this moment uh, in our design here we have three modules right module a module b and then module c right so module c is also here so at a certain time instance only one of this module will send the data and only one module will receive that data so at a certain moment two modules cannot send that data that means two modules can never send data to the bus at the same time uh, it is called bus contention so what is bus contention what is this problem let me discuss okay so let me give you an example let's say at a certain moment module a wants to send some data so what he is doing is he is giving some value like a certain 8 bit value like this one sorry one zero zero one zero 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 let's say one okay like this so 8 bit data is coming out from module a through these eight lines and also module c wants to send some data at the same instance okay so let's just take one bit for example uh, here here we can see the all eight bits right but let me simplify that and only take one bit of data let's say at the black line here one is going out so module a wants to send logic one through this black line at the same moment module c wants to send logic zero using this black line at the same moment right so what will happen if you understand digital logic we always define logic one as five volt okay when we practically implement it also logic zero is zero volt right or ground so what will happen when a plus 5 volt like this is connected with a ground okay so this is our 5 volt and this is our ground so when we connect this 5 volt with ground what will happen obviously a huge amount of current will flow through this circuit and the wire will get damaged right so this is a problem now if we look at the design here 
the module A is trying to send data 1 at the same line module C is trying to send data 0 and as they are totally connected there is no resistance in the path so a short circuit will happen and a huge amount of current will flow through this black line or black wire so to prevent that what we should do is that make sure at a certain moment or at a certain instant of time two module can never send data together okay at the bus so only one module will be active to send the data and then maybe one module will receive that data two module can receive that data no problem but what is very important is that never more than one module can send data at the bus at the same time okay okay so how can we solve this problem uh, there is one solution that is we can use tri-state buffers even if we just uh, make all of these bits to zero and say that module c is off when module a is uh, sending some data it is not quite totally right because even though these are all zero these logic zeros are going to the circuit right or the bus so what will happen obviously some short circuit current will flow through this circuit our eight wires so to prevent that what we need to do is whenever one module is sending data let's say module a is sending data all the other modules output will be disconnected from the bus okay what do i mean by disconnected that means when module a is sending data module c's eight line output eight lines will be totally disconnected so there will be no physical connection between the module c and the bus module b's output and bus like this okay but uh, obviously input connections can be there no problem but i am only talking about the output eight lines for each device each modules okay so one solution is obviously to use tri-state buffers okay so we obviously need to learn what are buffers and then tri-state buffers so if we talk about just buffer in buffer there is no enable connection like this okay only this in and out are available so whenever input is one obviously the output will be one whenever input is zero output will be zero but this is only for buffer not tri-state buffer in tri-state buffer there is a third connection that is enable right so this enable has two possible values one or zero so what will happen in these cases if enable is one same thing will happen like previous that means if enable is uh, input is one then output will be one if input is zero then output will be zero but what will happen if enable is zero okay that means we are giving a logic zero to the enable pin then then what will happen is that for this buffer for this tri-state buffer this input pin and output pin will be disconnected from each other physically okay so there will be no connection between input and output so even if input is one there will be no value at the output even if input value is zero there will be no value at the output okay so that's what we should do for our design right so what we will do is that we will just use a tri-state buffer for the output portion of our modules so that whenever one module is send, sending data to the bus other modules output will be disabled that's why there is an output enable pin okay for each module so whenever we want to send data from one module let's say for module a we are trying to send the data to the bus what we, we will do is that for module a we will make the output enable value to logic one for all other modules we will take output enable as zero 
so for module c it will be zero and also for module b it will be zero and then uh, for receiving that data at the same instance whichever module wants to receive that data will turn its load pin okay so let's say module b is trying to receive that data so what it will do is that it will just pull its load value to one okay that means load will be enable so whatever value that is available at the bus will be received by module b that is the main idea about 8 bit bus so these are the three rules that we need to follow obviously if we are trying to build our 8 bit bus for step one okay so now we will discuss in great detail about all the modules that are needed for our SAP one okay let's begin um, first of all program counter as we have described before so program counter if we look at its internal structure uh, it is just a traditional counter okay I think you have already learned about counters in great detail in your theory lecture so this is just a 4-bit counter that can count from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1, 1. That means decimal 0 to decimal 15, right? So what is actually the purpose here of this counter? When we try to execute a program in software, let's say C program, what do we do? Uh, we write something like this. At line 1, an instruction A then at line 2 some instruction b then at line 3 some instruction let's say d then whenever these instructions are getting executed what happens is that the instructions get executed one by one that means at first a will be executed then it will go to the next line and execute B then D like this so for our hardware case in our case SAP1 obviously we will have some same kind of intelligence that will keep track of the data or the instruction and one by one every instruction will get executed so for that our program counter works we I think we already know that uh, RAM is the primary memory of our SAP1 so all the instructions will be stored in our RAM and to fetch those data or the instructions we need specific address of those data in the RAM right so these addresses are actually stored in our program counter so as we can see here it is written is that the job is to store and send out the memory address of the next instruction to be fetched that means this memory address will be sent to the RAM so that the next instruction that is saved in the RAM can be fetched okay and after execution of each instruction this program counter will increment its value by one so that the next instruction can be fetched because uh, in RAM also the instructions are written or stored sequentially that means at memory 0000, 0, 0, 0 some instruction A then at 0, 0, 0, 0001 at this address B like this okay so one by one program counter will increment its value and fetch the data from our RAM okay so the next important thing of our program counter is the control bits uh, as we already know uh, controller sequencer sends some control bits to control all other modules in our SAP1 right so from controller sequencer two bits are coming out to this program counter one is CE and another is CO CE is counter enable so what is the purpose of counter enable whenever counter enable is one at the next clock pulse or next positive edge our program counter will increment its value okay then uh, for counter out whenever counter out is activated or turn to logic one what will happen is that uh, it will send the data to the bus okay so at the next 
positive edge whatever value that is saved in the program counter will be sent to the bus so that any other module can receive that data okay okay then the next one is memory address register or mar so this is just basically a 4 bit register and the purpose of this register is to store the memory address of ram from which our data will be fetched okay so uh, first of all the data will come from program counter like this through this pass then come to our memory address register okay so our memory address register will receive that 4 bit address from program counter then if we assume that for now this address selector is selecting this 4 bit that means whatever data that is available at the memory address register will be selected and then this data will go through this to our RAM okay so in this way our memory address register can point to a specific address of RAM so that specific data can be fetched and also uh, for the control bits uh, there is only one control bits for memory address register that is memory re memory address in or mi so what is the purpose uh, whenever this mi is turned high or enabled then whatever data that is available at the bus will be received by our memory address register so now uh, we will also need an input unit this input unit is needed so that we can write specific data or specific program to our RAM uh, for that as you can see uh, we will have some switches that are address switches uh, then data switch and also read write switch so what is the purpose of data switch uh, data switch is needed so that we can write a specific 8-bit data to a address okay the, that is d7 to d0 switch and also for selecting the specific address where we want to save that 8-bit data uh, we need an address switch so there will be four switches a3 to a0 and there will also be a read write switch i think you already know how to program a ram or how to store some data using this read write switch uh, this was covered in your theory lecture so i won't go into detail of this okay after that we also need a run proc selector switch um, as you know uh, there can be two states to our computer one is run uh, which is when we are trying to run our computer so programs are being executed in our sap one that is run state another one is proc state this is before run state when we are trying to uh, program our ram in a certain way so that we can get our desired outcome when the device is running okay so these are two state run and proc so based on the state our address selector will select one address between input unit and mar okay so as you can see from input unit a 4 bit address is coming to the address selector also this 4 bit is actually the memory address register so this is also coming to the address selector but based on the situation or state only one of them will be selected okay only one one four bit address will be selected so this is decided by this run or proc state so whenever uh, it's in run state obviously the mar output will be selected by address selector and whenever uh, it is in proc state input unit will be selected okay okay then very important that is um, random access memory or ram uh, you already know all about ram for our case we will need a 16 by 8 bit ram that is uh, it will have 16 memory locations each storing 8 bits of data and also uh, it can be programmed when we are in proc state uh, using this input unit that is uh, there is a lot of switches like data switch address switch and read write switch that will be needed for programming our ram before we run our uh, sap one 
okay uh, then where uh, when we are in uh, run state then the address selector will select the uh, data coming out from mar the addresses and this mar will point to a specific address of ram to fetch the data from the ram okay and also about the control bits uh, there is one control bit that is ram out or arrow uh, that will come from the controller sequencer so what is the purpose of arrow whenever this arrow input is enabled or turned high what it will do is it will put the currently selected ram byte onto the bus okay so currently selected 8 bit data will be available to be sent to the 8 bit bus that is when our arrow is high and whenever this is low it will just disconnect the output 8 wires from the 8 bit bus now I will show you a detailed diagram of this RAM so that you can understand how memory locations are laid out in this 16 by 8 RAM so let's see that here you can see that all the memory locations are shown in this detailed diagram of this RAM so from 0000 up to 1111 in these 16 locations we can store data and for each location we can store 8 bit of data right uh, these addresses are shown both in hexadecimal and also in binary so 0h means 0 in hexadecimal uh, similarly like this a h so a in hexadecimal and binary equivalent is this one okay and another important thing to mention here is that for executing any kind of program in our SAP one uh, first we need to write that specific program into our RAM right so how can we do that for doing that obviously we will need our input unit but here I will show you a detailed demonstration of how we can use this input unit to store a specific data in our RAM in a specific location okay usually uh, input unit in SAP1 is built using keypad and also some address switch registers uh, so that we can write program to the RAM but for our project we will just use simple switches to build this input unit so at the right as you can see this is our input unit and for building this input unit we have used only slide switches I think you already know how to use a slide switch because you have used this device in Tinkercad lab. So how can we use a slide switch? If you look closely you will see that for each of these slide switches there is a slider here right and we can move this slider to upper position or in the lower position and based on the position the middle pin will be connected with either the upper pin or the lower pin okay so let's start with this read write switch the middle pin is connected with our read write switch of RAM okay and the lower pin is connected with ground the upper pin is connected with 5 volt that means whenever this slider is at the upper position this orange line will get 5 volt or logic 1 and when this slider is at lower position then our orange pin or read write pin will get ground or logic zero right so whenever this read write pin is getting a high value or a logic one that means we are in read mode and whenever we are getting a logic zero then we are in write mode okay so based on this slider position we can give a read command or write command okay then let's come to this data switch uh, for this data switch there are eight switches from d7 to d0 and for all of these switches the middle pin is connected with corresponding input pin here okay input pin of our RAM so from d7 to d0 all of these pins are connected with our ram and if we want to send a specific 8 bit data to our ram we will use these eight switches okay and for these switches also same thing is done just the upper pin is connected with 5 volt that means 
whenever these slide switches are in upper position then we will get a logic one value and whenever this slider is in lower position then we will get a logic zero then let's come to this address switch before describing this address switch let me mention one thing is that as you can see i have omitted the address selector here right so why have i done that i have done that because i am only considering here program state not the run state so we are not executing any kind of program we are just writing a data or program in our RAM. so we are in proc state that's why i'm just omitting the other portions related to run state okay that's why these address switches from a3 to a0 are directly connected with our address pins of ram now okay let's say we want to write a specific 8 bit data that is 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 0 at a specific address of ram that is 1 0 0 1 so at this location 9 h or 1 0 0 1 we want to write a specific 8 bit data this one right so how can we do that using this input unit okay the first thing that we need to do here is we need to be in read mode here okay because if we are in write mode and we change anything at the data switch and address switch then unnecessary thing will be stored in our ram that we do not want so first we need to be in read mode so that no unnecessary things are written in our ram then we can change any value we want in the data switch and also in address switch accordingly okay so that's why our slider of read write switch is in upper position so that uh, a logic one is getting to our read write pin here so we will be in read mode okay then the next thing that we need to do is change the values of these switches according to this 8 bit data and also this address right so let's do that so as you can see slider position of some switches have changed so let us check the values for d7 the value is 0 here because the slider is at lower position right and for d6 1 for d5 also 1 for d4 0 d3 is 1 d2 is 1 d1 is 0 d0 is also 0 okay so this specific 8 bit data is now given here in this data switch right so 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 0 and for the address 1 0 0 1 should be there so let's look at this address switches so a3 is 1 a2 is 0 a1 is also 0 a0 is 1 so our specific address is also given here in this address switch but still we are in read mode here okay so for writing this specific data we need to change our read write mode so for writing this specific data to this specific address we need to change our mode from read to write okay so this slider position should be changed right now and at this specific location 1001 and 8 bit data should be stored okay let's see that happen so here we can see that the position of this switch just got changed so right now we are in write mode so as you can see in our ram this specific address is selected and the 8 bit that we wanted to store is already stored so in this way we can store our program in the ram using input unit okay so then we also need accumulator and b register so both of them are actually very simple and just like a normal register i think you already know how to build a register um so both of them has a, has the size of 8 bit 
and if you look at this figure you will see that this accumulator and this B register are connected with the ALU so that data can be sent to the ALU okay so the main purpose of these two register is to store the data and then send them to ALU so that ALU can perform arithmetic operations okay and also for accumulator there is also another uh, special responsibility that is uh, so whenever an instruction is executed the result of that instruction will be sent to this accumulator for storage okay so that uh, it can output intermediate results after each ALU operation so what are the control bits of these two modules for accumulator there are two control bits one of them is accumulator in or also we can say ai and another one is accumulator out ao for b register there is only one control bit that is coming from your controller sequencer that is b register in or bi from the name i think it's already very clear that accumulator in is basically for the input purpose that means whenever the accumulator wants to receive some data from the bus it will just enable ai so that data can enter and whenever it wants to send some data to the bus it will just turn on ao or uh, keep its value to a high level okay for the B register, BI is basically just for input enable. That means whenever this BI is high, whatever data that is available at the bus will be sent to B register uh, through this line. Okay. Okay, now arithmetic and logic unit that is ALU. So ALU should be capable of 8-bit binary addition or subtraction. That means we can use a 8-bit binary error subtractor for designing this. Um, and also, as we have already discussed, the two resistors accumulator and also B resistors are connected with this ALU so that two 8-bit data can be sent to this ALU, right? Okay, then it performs the arithmetic operations, then whenever needed it sends the data to the bus okay so what are the control bits here uh, first one is addition subtraction select uh, that is called su so here we can see su so whenever su value is equal to logic 0 addition operation will be operated and when su is equal to 1 subtraction operation will happen okay then another one another control bit is alu out eo so very simple uh, whenever we want to send the data to the bus we will just keep this eo bit to high that means the controller sequencer will send a high pulse to this eo so that alu can send the data to the bus okay so the next one is output unit this is basically just an 8-bit register and the purpose of this register is to display the data or the output data whenever required and it receives the data from accumulator so the accumulator as we have already discussed accumulates the data or the result after each instruction so whenever required this output register can request that data from accumulator and then display it for display purpose also a binary display can be connected with this output register so okay then uh, about the control bits there is only one control bits that is coming into the output register from controller sequencer so whenever the program wants to uh, output some data it will just send or the controller sequencer will send a high data to this output register in or oi bit so that whatever data that is available at the 8-bit bus can be sent to this output register and then stored for display purpose okay then instruction register uh, our instruction register is also a 8-bit register and the purpose of this register is to store the 8-bit instruction that is received from our 
16 by 8 RAM okay so 8 bit data will be received from our RAM and go through this bus and then receive to this instruction register then this 8 bit data is split into two nibbles so now what is nibbles let's say for example um, this is one 8 bit data one zero zero one 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 zero one okay so the first four bit this can be called as a nibble the next four bit can also be called as a nibble so we will call the first one as upper nibble okay so this one is upper nibble and this is lower nibble and as the 8 bit data is split into these two nibbles the upper nibble will go into the controller sequencer like this okay so like this at the controller sequencer the first four bit will go and for the lower nibble that will be sent to the bus okay like this from this path it will go to the bus so about the control bits there are two control bits to control this instruction register first one is instruction register in or ii so this one is ii and whenever this instruction register in bit is turned to high what will happen whatever data that is available at the 8 bit bus that will be sent to this instruction register like this okay and for the next one the instruction register out whenever this bit is high the instruction register will send the lower nibble this lower nibble to the bus okay using this 4 bit line okay so the next one is controller sequencer this is actually a very important module for our sap one because it generates all the necessary control signals for each block so that actions can occur in a desired sequence so if you look closely you will see that this controller sequencer is generating 12 bits like this okay and all these bits are going to the other module so that it can control the modules uh, let's say for example this io bit this is actually connected like this okay so whenever controller sequencer is sending some data like high or low through this IO pin to this instruction register the instruction register will behave accordingly okay and also uh, another thing is that besides these 12 bits a 13 bit called HLT or HALT is also generated by controller sequencer uh, here we can see this halt output so what is the purpose of this halt output uh, it can halt the process of computer by stopping the main clock okay okay so now as we have discussed about all the components needed for designing sap1 we can move on to instruction set so what is an instruction uh, when we are programming or executing a program this program is basically just uh, a bunch of commands right and each of this command can be called as an instruction for our case in sap1 this instruction one of these instruction consists of only one byte or 8 bit okay at the right side if you look at the example this is just a simple example of our instruction so as you can see this is totally 8 bit it is divided into first 4 bit here which can be called as upper nibble and the lower nibble here okay so the first nibble or the upper nibble can be called as instruction field okay this is reserved for instruction field or opcode uh, if i try to explain it in a simple way 
the first four bit basically defines the kind of instruction or the type of instruction we are trying to execute let's say we are trying to add or subtract or output the data that is available like this okay uh, so what is actually opcode opcode means operation code um, I will explain about this very soon but what about the lower nibble lower nibble is reserved for any kind of parameter that we want to pass for the instruction that we have defined in the upper nibble okay so it is actually optional for some of the instruction we will see that lower nibble is used and for others it is not used okay for the ones for the instruction which use the lower nibble they can be called as memory reference instruction okay uh, we will go into detail about that uh, but some other instruction don't use the lower nibble as I have already discussed okay so what are the instructions that we need to implement in our case in SAP 1 uh, those are actually five instructions LDA add sub out and HLT and now I will go into detail of all these instructions okay so now the first one is LDA the instruction LDA so the instruction the full form is load accumulator and mnemonic what is mnemonic uh, mnemonic is just an abbreviation that we use to simplify our instruction okay so for load accumulator we will always say LDA to uh, describe that instruction okay and opcode or operation code is 0000, 0000. so why is this needed because our SAP1 computer cannot understand any language like uh, we do L like uh, they don't understand load accumulator or LDA so we need to define some binary instructions so that they can understand that this is uh, LDA okay for that we are assigning a 4-bit value that is 0000 for each instruction there will be a different kind of opcode so that uh, our SAP1 can distinguish between one and other so what is the function of LDA let's look at this example so it is saying LDA 9H uh, in assembly language you will see that numbers are always shown like this that means this H means hexadecimal so this is basically saying 9 in hexadecimal and in binary we can also say 0000 because the opcode for LDA is 0000 and then the binary equivalent of 9H is 1001 right so now what this function is trying to tell us is that look at the address of RAM the address 9h of RAM okay so at the RAM look at 9h whatever data that is available at address 9h fetch that data so it will be fetched like this then send that data to the accumulator okay so it will be sent like this to the accumulator so this is the total instruction load accumulator or LTA okay so the next one is add uh, so the instruction is basically just simple addition and the mnemonic is add and the opcode we are defining here is 0001 so what is the function let's look at this example this is add 8h right or in binary we can say 0001 and 1000 because the binary equivalent of 8h is 1000 so what does it trying to tell us it is trying to tell us whatever data that is available at the RAM at 8h address take that and also the data that is currently available at the accumulator also take that and add those two value okay so this is our instruction and also one other thing is 
if you look closely you will see that for this add instruction there are two fields the upper nibble is present also lower nibble is present uh, we have said that for the instruction who uses the lower nibble are called as memory reference instruction so the previous one that is LDA and also this add instruction both are memory reference instruction okay then the next one is instruction subtract or in mnemonic we can say in short sub the opcode we are giving here is 0010 so what is the function here let's look at this example it is sub bh uh, b in hexadecimal obviously and in binary we can say 0010 1011 so it is very similar to the previous instruction that is at what it is trying to tell us is that whatever data that is available at the RAM at pH address take that then subtract the data from the value that is stored in accumulator okay so this is the simple instruction here and also if you look closely you will see that uh, it is also a memory reference instruction because the lower nibble is used okay then the next one is instruction out so instruction is basically outputting the data mnemonic is out and the opcode we are assigning is 0011 so what is the function look at this example this is just simple out or in binary obviously 0011 so it will just load the data from the accumulator then send that data to the output register very simple so whatever data that is available at the accumulator you will take that then send that data like this to the output register okay and also look at one thing that the lower nibble is not used here because we do not need to refer any memory here okay for this we can say that this instruction is not a memory reference instruction okay let's go to the next one this is HLT or halt so the instruction is halt mnemonic is HLT and the opcode we are assigning is 1111 the function um, if you look at the example this is also simple just the instruction the opcode is written here so the opcode is HLT in binary 1111 so what is the purpose the purpose is to hold the process of computer by stopping the main clock so now as you will see we are delving into the more complicated portion of our lecture so I suggest that you keep your concentration here uh, we will discuss here the instruction cycle okay so I think you already know what is an instruction but the time required for executing one single instruction is called the instruction cycle and also for each instruction you will see that each instruction consists of several smaller instruction and they are called micro instruction if we look at the picture at the right you can see the total portion here this is the time required for one instruction to be completed okay so we are calling it the instruction cycle but this instruction cycle is actually divided into some smaller instructions that are called micro instruction and uh, the time required for completing one micro instruction is actually called the T state uh, if you look at the figure the first one T1 state so this is one micro instruction and the time required for completing that is equal to t1 state and similarly t2 state like this so uh, total six micro instructions are here and as you will see in sap1 uh, the length of an instruction cycle is six time state that means for uh, executing one instruction we have to execute six micro instruction I hope that's clear and also uh, we can divide the instruction cycle into two parts 
the first one is the phase cycle the first three t states are called the phase cycle the, those are t1 t2 and t3 right so something like this this t1 t2 and t3 these are phase cycle for the next one the execution cycle that consists of last three t state those are t4 t5 and t6 so here t4 t5 t6 these are execution cycle okay so now we will go into the details of this phase cycle and execution cycle so before we do that there is another thing very important to be discussed that is uh, if you look closely you will see that each t state starts at the negative edge of the clock pulse uh, like this okay here at the negative edge the t1 is starting then t2 is starting and whenever it is starting the control bits are changing at this point or at this point right but as we know all the modules should trigger at the positive edge like this here okay so this is done because correct control bits should be already available to all the modules before the modules trigger okay so whenever the modules are triggering before that already the control bits are changed and stable okay so this is important okay phase cycle uh, we already know that phase cycle is t1 t2 and t3 combined right uh, this is responsible for fetching the instruction from memory okay that's why it's called fetch cycle because we are fetching the instruction from memory and fetch cycle is exactly same for all instruction this is very important that means um, we have learned already about five instruction those are lda at sub out and halt for all those instruction the fetch cycle is very similar okay and uh, if you look at this table this is the 3t state required for our phase cycle okay so i will explain one by one here and also in this figure the first one is t t1 state right the t1 state is actually called the address state and the control bits that are activated during this t1 state are co and mi so co is here right co is this one and mi is this one co is counter out and mi is memory address register in so what will happen as co is activated whatever data that is available at the program counter will be sent to the bus and also as mi is enabled mar will store the data that is available at the 8 bit bus so program counter will send the data through the bus and our memory address register will receive that data okay so this is t1 address state then let's go to t2 state so for t2 state we are calling it the increment state and the activated control bit is ce that is counter enable so whenever we just enable the ce pin what happens the program counter increases its counter value or the stored value by one okay let's say previously it was 0001 now it will increment its value and change to 0010 something like this okay then the third state t3 for t3 we are calling it memory state and the activated control bits are ro and ii right so ro is here at the ram and ii is for the instruction register so ro is basically the ram out so whenever this is enabled whatever data that is available at the ram at a specified address so the address will be specified by mar or memory address register as we have already know in t1 state uh, the program counter sent the address to mar so mar should already have some address that can point to the ram so 
at that address whatever data is available ram will send that data to the 8 bit bus and at the same time as ii or instruction in bit is enabled so instruction register will try to receive and store whatever value that is available at the 8 bit bus okay so uh, ram is sending the data and through the bus instruction register will receive the data at t3 so this is total t1 t2 and t3 states uh, all of them together are called fetch cycle okay after that uh, execution cycle so t4 t5 and t6 these are execution cycle and whatever instruction that is fetched in the previous fetch cycle will be executed here in this execution cycle and another important thing to notice is that for execution cycle the micro instruction that are t4 t5 and t6 these are very different for different instructions let's say for example uh, LDA for LDA T4 T5 and T6 will be very different from the T4 T5 and T6 of add instruction okay um, now let me explain the execution cycle for LDA the first one is T4 right and the activated control bits are IO and MI so IO is here in the instruction register and MI is here in the memory address register so you already know io is instruction register out so whatever data that is stored in instruction register here will be sent outside but how for instruction register uh, let's say a, for example we are giving a 8 bit value that is stored right now 0 1 0 1 then 1 1 0 0 so what this instruction register will do is it will just divide the whole 8 bit into two chunks like this okay the upper one is called upper nibble and the lower one is called lower nibble so the instruction register will send the upper nibble to the controller sequencer and the lower nibble will be sent to the 8 bit bus and as you have seen here mi bit is enabled so memory address register in is enabled so mar will try to receive and store the data the data that is available at the 8 bit bus so right now the available data is sent from instruction register the 4 bit data so that will be sent to the memory address register like this okay so there goes our t4 then t5 for T5, the activated control bits are uh, AI and RO, right? So for AI, we can see that AI is available at the accumulator and RO is available at the RAM. Okay. So whenever AI bit or accumulator in bit is enabled, the accumulator will try to receive data from 8 bit pass. As RO is also enabled, it will try to send the 8 bit data that is pointed out right now as the address okay so as we already know in the previous t state mar was pointing to a specific address of ram okay so for that address whatever data is available at the ram will be sent to the bus and that data will be received by our accumulator so the last one is the t6 state so for t6 there is no operation happening for lda instruction so that's it for lda so then now execution cycle for add and the first t state is t4 for that the activated control bits are io and mi and if you look at the previous one for LDA uh, for LDA also the activated control bits for T4 was similar IO and MI right so uh, very similar thing will happen here uh, as we can see uh, the IO bit is enabled here in the instruction register and MI is enabled at the memory address register so whenever IO is enabled 
instruction register will just uh, divide its 8-bit data into two chunks. The upper nibble will be sent to the controller sequencer and the lower nibble will be sent to the 8-bit bus. And as MI is enabled, memory address register will try to receive whatever data that is available at the 8-bit bus. That means the data instruction register is sending will be sent to our memory address register like this okay um, then t5 for t5 the activated control bits are arrow and bi right so arrow is available at the ram and bi is available at the b register bi means b register in so whenever arrow is enabled it will try to send whatever data that is available at the pointed address okay so obviously mar will point to a specific address of ram so at that address whatever 8-bit data is available will be sent to the bus okay and then as pi is enabled b register will try to receive that data through this 8-bit line okay then for T6, the activated control bits are EO and AI. EO is available at this ALU here. So then for AI, this accumulator has this AI bit. Okay. So one thing to notice here is that as ALU is a combinational circuit, that means it doesn't need any clock pulse to do its arithmetic operation whenever the 8-bit data from accumulator and B register is available just at that moment ALU will try to do its arithmetic operation okay so we do not need any extra clock pulse uh, do not need to trigger something to get the result from ALU so right now we can assume that the result that we are trying to achieve from ALU is already available so whenever we activate this EO pin what will happen is that that data is, which is available at the ALU will be sent to the 8-bit bus because EO is enabled. Then as uh, AI is enabled accumulator will try to receive that data with this 8-bit line okay so the data will be sent from ALU through this bus and sent to the accumulator and accumulator will store that data okay the next one is execution cycle for sub and if you look closely you will see that uh, the instructions here are very similar to the instructions here so IO MI IO MI uh, ROBI ROBI and for the T6 also EO AI is very similar only just this special bit is activated here um, so for the case of sub the execution cycle and the behavior will be very similar the only difference is this SU bit so whenever uh, this SU bit is 1 then instead of addition operation a subtraction operation will happen other than that everything is very similar for the execution cycle of add and for sub okay then the next one is execution cycle for out um, the first t state is t4 for that the activated control bits are a o and o i right so a o is available at this accumulator here okay and OI is available at this output register here so what will happen for accumulator if AO bit is enabled that means the output is enabled whatever data that is available or stored in accumulator will be sent to the 8-bit bus like this okay and as y is enabled for output register this is the input enable so whatever data that is available at the 8-bit bus will be sent to output register like this okay 
so data that is sent from accumulator will go through this 8-bit bus like this and will be sent to the output register and then output register will store that data okay and for t5 and t6 there is no instruction that needs to be executed okay for the execution cycle of out now the execution cycle for halt for halt it actually doesn't require any kind of execution cycle because no registers are involved in this execution of halt instruction okay so simply what happens is that you can see at the controller sequencer there is a bit called HLT the controller sequencer will simply activate the halt halt bit HLT bit which will stop the main clock so this is uh, execution cycle for halt at this point I think I have covered a lot of things related to the theory of SAP1 so now we will see an example program and there we will learn about the step-by-step -step execution of each instructions each micro instructions in detail but before that we also need to know how to write a program into the RAM right so here we can see an example program this is written in assembly so the addresses are written in hexadecimal as you can see right so in the figure also you will see that the addresses are laid out like this in assembly and also in binary right so now let me explain the code in brief the first instruction is LDA 9H so what does it mean it means that whatever data that is available at address 9H of RAM take the data then send that data to the accumulator so now our accumulator has some data saved for the next instruction this is at AH right so for at AH we'll have to take whatever data that is available at AH address of RAM then add that value with the value stored in accumulator okay then for the next one sub ph it is almost the same thing actually uh, for this what we have to do is take the value that is stored in the address of bh of ram subtract that data from the data available at the accumulator okay then now our accumulator has some data stored we need to show that right so for that we are giving this instruction out so whatever data that is available at the accumulator will be sent to the output register for display purpose and after that I think uh, as our program has finished all the executions now we can stop our program right so for that the last instruction is HLT or halt so our clock will be stopped and all the execution will be stopped okay and there you will also see that some data in higher memory is also needed why is that because in the first instruction we have said that at the address 9h of RAM there should be some data to be fetched okay so we need to store that data whatever data we are trying to fetch for that at 9h address we need to store some kind of data for now we have stored 05h also for the next two cases also AH and BH address we are storing some data at AH and also at BH address okay I hope that's clear then if we try to convert this code into a binary form something like this will happen okay so here we can see that the first command was 0h in the address so the similar address is 0000 and for the program the 8-bit program is LDA 9h so we need to convert both of them into binary right uh, if we look back into the name of the instructions and their opcode for LDA the designated opcode was 0000 that's why we have written here 0000 and this 0000 is written because of this address they are not similar okay 
but uh, for the 9H, the lower nibble, we just need to convert that value into binary, right? So the binary equivalent is 1001. And similarly, the next ones will be written. For address 1H, the similar address is written in binary 0001. Then for the program at AH, we know for the add instruction, the corresponding opcode is 0001. So this is written here like this. Then the memory address AH. So equivalent binary is written as 1010. And this way, the next one is also written. Okay, so the next one is out instruction, right? It is stored in address 3H. So equivalent binary is 0011. And the corresponding opcode for out is 0011. So we have written this here. Okay. And also, as you will uh, see that for the out instruction, there is no lower nibble. Okay these four bits are missing so for that we do not need actually uh, write any kind of data here we can write any kind of data here no problem because this is basically just a don't care case so obviously we will not use that data this lower nipple so whatever data we write here doesn't matter okay similarly for the halt the address is 4h so we have written the equivalent binary and for halt the opcode is 1111 so we have written here 1111 and we have kept this as 0000 because we do not need the lower nibble for halt instruction okay for the higher memory higher portion of the memory what we have done we have just written at address 9h the value 5h so similarly the address is 1001 and the data should be the 8-bit equivalent of 5H. So the 8-bit equivalent 5H is this one. And similarly, the next one are also done here. Okay. So now we will write this data into the RAM. Right. So, okay. Uh, as we can see, uh, for the address 0000, that means the first address here, we should write this value this 8-bit value okay so this will be written here like this so if you uh, try to match all these you will see that for the first one uh, 0000 so 0000 and the lower nibble is 1001 okay so this total 8-bit is stored in 0000 in this way all the data are stored here okay into the corresponding address locations here and also you will notice that for these addresses we haven't written anything this is because we do not need to write anything as we will not be using any kind of data from these addresses okay also for these cases so we haven't written anything in general practically there will be some random data stored here but we do not need to worry about these because we will not use those okay so this is how we will write our data into the RAM. Okay, so now we will see the step-by-step -step execution of our program. So first of all, here we can see this program that we have already written earlier. And we also know that for each instructions like this, there should be six micro instructions so let's begin initially the first instruction should be executed that means lda 9h will be executed and for that the first micro instruction is t1 right so t1 will be executed right now and for that the activated control bits are co and mi okay now we will see in this figure how this micro instruction will execute one thing to remember here is the convention I have used to show the module is that for the modules which are sending the data to the bus, they will be colored in green. And for the modules which are receiving the data or receiving any kind of data from the bus, they will be colored blue. 
okay so for the first case as we can see c o and m i c o and m i bits are enabled that means for c o this is counter out right initially the program counter will have the value 0000, 0, 0, 0 when the program starts so the counter out will command this program counter to send whatever data that is available in program counter so this 0000, 0, 0, 0 value will be sent to the bus and for the case of memory address register the activated control bit is mi so mi is memory address register in so whatever data that is available at the bus will be sent to the mar okay so what will happen this 0000, 0, 0, 0 data will be sent from program counter to this mar okay let's see how this is happening so like this the data from program counter will be sent to the mar okay there goes our t1 then let's go to t2 for t2 the activated control bit is ce ce means counter enable so whenever counter enable is activated the value right now program counter is storing will be incremented by one okay so right now it is 0000, 0, 0, 0. it will be 0, 0, 0, 0001 so let's see how that happens so right now as we can see the value changed from 0000, 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 0, 0001 okay then let's go to the next state that is t3 so at t3 the activated control bits are ro and ii so ro is available at this ram and ii is available at the instruction register so let's explain the case of ram for the ram first of all we need to know that right now we are in run state okay because we are running the program so address selector will select the value from mar so this 0000, 0, 0, 0 value will be selected and it will select a specific address from the ram so right now as this is 0000, 0, 0, 0, we can see in ram this 0000 0, 0, 0 value or 0h value is selected okay so and also as we can see ro or ram out pin is enabled that means it is commanding our ram to send whatever data that is available at this register to send to the bus okay so it will try to send whatever data that is available at the ram so this is the data that we need to send to the bus then if we come to the instruction register for that ii is activated that means instruction register in is enabled so what will it do it will just receive whatever data that is available at the bus that means the data will be sent by ram and will be received by instruction register so let's see how that happens so as we can see the data came from the ram and now residing in the instruction register okay so now let's go to the next state that is t4 for t4 the activated control bits are io and mi right so io is in this instruction register and mi is here at the memory address register so we already know when io or instruction register output is enabled our data 8-bit data will be divided into two parts the upper nibble and lower nibble the upper nibble will be sent to controller sequencer and the lower nibble the address actually as you can see this is 1001 so equivalent 9h okay so we need to fetch whatever data that is available at 9h address of our ram that's why we are sending this data to the mar okay so it will be sent to the bus as mar has mi enabled it will try to receive that data okay let's see how that happens in t4 state so as you can see when data is coming to the controller sequencer other one was sent to the mar right now the value that is stored in mar is 1001 okay then let's go to the next state that is t5 
In T5, the activated control bits are AI and RO. So where is AI? AI is in accumulator and RO is this RO from RAM. So once again, RO is activated. So what will happen? First of all, as MAR has value of 1001, so this specific address will be selected by MAR from this RAM. Okay, so this is selected and obviously this value needs to be sent to the bus because RO is enabled. So that will happen as we can see this value will be sent to the bus and who will receive the data? Accumulator will receive the data because AI bit is enabled. AI is accumulator in. So whatever data that is available at the bus will be received by this accumulator. Okay. So this 8-bit data will be sent by RAM and will be received by accumulator. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So something like this. Okay. Right now accumulator has some 8-bit data stored. Then for the next case T6 nothing will happen because no operation. Okay. So no change will occur at T6 for the first case that is LDA 9H. Okay, then let's proceed to the next instruction that is at AH. Okay, so for this one, let's see the micro instructions. So these are the micro instructions, but as I have already discussed for each instruction, for every kind of instructions, the first three micro instructions are exactly the same that means for the previous one t1 was comi here also same thing is happening also for t2 and t3 so these three micro instruction will be same for all the instruction so we can just uh, briefly describe them here so first of all what should happen as co and mi these two bits are activated so we will see that CO is activated here and MI is activated here. That's why program counter will send the data and MAR will receive that. Okay. So the data that is currently stored in program counter is 0001. So that will be sent to the MAR. So let's see. So right now our memory address register has the value of 0001. Then let's go to the next state that is T2. At T2, CE should be enabled. That's why we are seeing that CE is enabled. And what is the purpose of this micro instruction? To increment the value of our program counter. So our program counter will increment its value by 1. Okay. So now, as we can see, the new value is 0010 or decimal equivalent 2. Then Let's go to the next state that is T3. At T3, RO and II, these two bits are activated. So here RO and II. And already as MAR has the value of 0001, so this specific address will be selected in RAM. Okay. So right now this address is selected and RO is activated. So whatever data that is available at this specific address, this value should be sent to the bus and also as ii is enabled that means whatever data that is available at the bus will be received by our instruction register so let's see how that happens okay so the data will come from the ram and then go to the instruction register something like this okay so like this okay then let's go to the next instruction that is t4 for T4, as we can see, IO and MI are the activated control bits. IO is available here and MI is available here. This is also very similar to the previous one. Um, so when IO is enabled, that means the instruction register will just split the data into two chunks. That is upper nibble and lower nibble. Upper nibble will be sent to the controller sequencer lower nibble will be sent to the MAR okay because MI is activated so let's see how that happens okay so then after that let's go to T5 at T5 RO and BI are activated so RO is here BI is here 
So as we already know, some value is available at the mar that is 1010. So it will point to a specific address in the RAM here like this. Okay. So this particular value here should be sent to the bus because RO is activated and who will receive that data? B register will receive that data as BI is enabled. BI means B register in. Okay, so let's see how that happens. Okay, then after that, the last micro instruction in T6 is uh, this one. So here, the control bits activated are EO and AI, right? EO is available at the ALU. And as we know, right now, the ACU bit is not activated. That means ACU equals zero. That means our ALU will perform addition operation. That's why there is a plus sign here. So what will happen? We already know some value is available at the B register and some value is available at the accumulator from previous instruction. Okay. So these two values will be added and the summation result will be sent to the bus because EO or ALU enable pin, output enable pin is activated here. So let's see how that happens. First of all, the data will come to the ALU, then addition operation will happen. After that, the summation result, that is this one, will be sent to our accumulator because accumulator has a bit enabled that is AI. AI means accumulator in. So whatever data that is available at the bus will be received by accumulator then stored okay let's see how that happens so data is coming from alu and finally received by accumulator so there goes our t6 okay okay so the next instruction is sub bh the third instruction uh, for that the six micro instructions are like this and here the first micro instruction is t1 uh, we already know T1, T2 and T3 will be very similar to the previous instruction. So for T1, CO and MI are activated. Let's see that. So here CO and MI are activated. So here whatever data that is available at the program counter will be sent to the memory address register. So let's see that happen. So now mar has the address 0010 stored for the next t state t2 ce is enabled so when ce is enabled program counter will just increment its value by one so previously it was 0010 right now it will change to 0011 like this okay after that for t3 here the activated control bits are RO and II. So here RO and here II. So before everything, MAR has some address that is stored in here. So it will just select that specific address from RAM. So this is selected here. So this 8-bit data will be sent to the bus because RO is selected. And who will receive that? instruction register because ii is enabled so let's see that happen so here we can see this 8 bit will now be sent to the bus okay so something like this from the ram to the instruction register okay then the fourth one t4 for that the activated control bits are io and mi so io is here MI is here. So whenever IO is activated, instruction register will just split its 8-bit data into 4-bit chunks so that the first 4 bits, the upper nibble can be sent to the controller sequencer and lower will be sent to the MAR like this. Okay, let's see that happen. So these instructions are very similar to the previous one because from T1 up to T4 right now, we are seeing that everything is similar to the previous instruction at okay okay so for the next micro instruction 
T5, the control bits are RO and BI, right? So here this is RO and in B register, this is BI. And already as some value is stored in MAR, so this specific address will be selected at the RAM. So this is selected. So this 8-bit data will be sent to the bus because RO is selected and B register will receive that data as BI is activated okay so now as you can see here this 8-bit data will be sent to the bus and B register will receive that so let's see that happen so now our B register has a new value then the last micro instruction T6 for this case three control bits are activated EO AI and SU so EO, AI and SU will also be activated here. So SU will be activated. That's why the sign we are seeing here, this is minus because subtraction operation will happen right now. So let's see how that happens. So data are coming from accumulator and also B register right here. So uh, the first value minus the second value the result will be shown here so this is the result of this subtraction and this value will be sent to our accumulator because ai this bit is enabled right so let's see so now our accumulator has a new value okay so there goes our third instruction sub ph let's go to the next one Okay, so for this command, the four command out, uh, let's see the micro instructions. So these are the micro instructions here. And here, as we can see, T1, T2, and T3 are very similar like the previous ones. So the first state is T1, let's see, CO and MI are enabled. So here, as we can see, CO and MI are enabled, right? So uh, the data that is available at program counter will be sent to MAR at this state, right? So let's see that happen. Our MAR now has a new value. Then let's go to the next state here. In the next state T2, CE should be enabled, right? So as CE is enabled here, our program counter will now increment its value by one. So it has incremented its value by one. Then let's go to our next instruction. In next instruction, the activated control bits are RO and II. So here RO and after that in the instruction register II, right? As we have seen already, our memory address register has a new value new address so it will just point to a specific address in the RAM like this here so this 8-bit value will be sent to our 8-bit bus because RO is now activated right and also the data will be received by our instruction register as II or instruction register in is enabled so let's see how that happens this 8-bit data will be sent through the bus to this instruction register okay so like this and now our instruction register has a new value this one after that even though this instruction register uh, doesn't have its IO control bit activated still the upper level of this 8-bit will be sent to our controller sequencer because they are directly connected and the transfer of this 4-bit is not dependent upon any clock signal, okay? So now this upper level will be sent to our controller sequencer here, okay? Then after that, let's go to our next state that is T4, okay? So at T4, as we can see, the two control bits that are activated are AO and AI. So here, this is AO in the accumulator and for the output register, OI, right? 
so what will happen as AO is enabled AO means accumulator out that means accumulator will try to send whatever data that is available here to our bus and output register will receive that data because OI or output register in is activated so let's see that happen so data is coming from accumulator then finally residing in output register okay there goes our t4 then let's go to t5 as we can see here no operation should happen at t5 and also at t6 so there goes our fourth instruction that is out let's go to the fifth one the last one hlt so what are the micro instructions for this instruction these are the specific micro instructions already we know very clearly that for the first three case the response will be very similar that means at t1 co and mi bits are enabled okay so what that means is co will be enabled here mi will be enabled here the data that is staying in program counter will be sent to our memory address register okay so let's see that happen here now our memory address register has a new value a new address then let's go to the next state t2 at t2 ce should be enabled here we can see ce is enabled so our program counter should increment its value right now so now it just incremented its value by one let's go to the next state at t3 ro and ii should be enabled here ro and here ii right and this mar has a specific address so it will just point to a specific address here at the ram so this 8-bit data will be selected and will be sent to the bus right and our instruction register will receive it because ii is enabled okay so let's see the 8-bit data so this is our 8-bit data here it will be sent to the bus let's see so it is going to the bus then finally to our instruction register so now our instruction register has a new value stored in it and this is 11110000 so as we know already instruction register is connected to the controller sequencer even though no new control bits are activated this value will be coming to this controller sequencer okay and this is actually the halt instruction 1111 is the opcode for halt instruction so as our controller sequencer recognizes this command it will stop the clock and halt the whole process okay so then at t4 the whole process will be halted by our controller sequencer and after that at t5 and t6 nothing will happen because our computer has already stopped so here i have tried to explain each and every step of all the micro instructions and instructions in this example program and i also hope that it was simple enough to understand okay then i can also suggest you some additional resources the first one is the book digital computer electronics third edition so in this book in chapter 10 you can learn about sap1 also there is another very interesting resource that you can explore which is a youtube video series created by ben eater this is called building an 8-bit breadboard computer there ben eater designed a modified version of sap1 using a breadboard so you can go through these resources to get a better understanding of sap1 well this is the end of this lecture hope you liked it allah fez